Welcome back to our Algebra 2 series. And today we are, uh, I'm going to do another two-part series. This one is in 5.4, Inequalities. Today we'll work with just the um, uh, polynomials. And then in the next video, I'll, I'll handle the rational uh, inequalities. So as we see here, this is our first example from the text. And um, what I have written out there shows that because this is a greater than or equal to, we're looking for the positive areas uh, where the product is positive. And also, uh, we're going to accept these values. So notice how in negative 1, uh, that turns into a bracket. And 1 also turns into a, oopsie, right here, turns into a bracket instead of a parentheses uh, in our interval notation. So this one here is interval notation. And then down below that, we've got some set notation right there. So that one is already spelled out in your notes. So I'll move on to example two. In example two, we have an x on the right-hand side. So we want to move that to the other side to be with his friends. And then we factor out that common x, leaving us an x squared minus 4x minus 1. And unfortunately, x squared minus 4x minus 1 is not factorable. So in order for us to calculate the numbers that are going to go on the line, you know, we've got this x here, which produces 0. But what do these two quantities produce? And in order to see that, we've got to solve the x squared minus 4x minus 1 equals 0. And if we do this by the quadratic formula, we would get 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times the negative 1, which is the c value, and that's all over 2a. Continuing, I'm going to just write this out here, plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. Now, this all re reduces uh, to 2 radical 5, and this is all over 2. Factoring out the common 2 gives us this. Now, I'm just doing this kind of fast because this is an Algebra 1 technique. But anyway, the answer here coming out to be 2 plus or minus radical 5. And so these are the two values that come up. But like that has happened in the past, and of course, this is the number we're looking for here, 2 plus radical 5. And over here, we're looking for 2 minus radical 5. That number is much closer to 0 than it looks. But anyway, there it is. But what we don't usually see is we don't usually see that in factored form. That would be x minus the 2 plus root 5 and x minus the 2 minus root 5. And that's actually what this polynomial factors to, would be those two, um, well, I, don't, I wouldn't call them binomials, but they kind of look like a binomial, the x over here, and then the 2 plus root 5 being the answer next to that in the binomial form. OK, continuing on with this, uh, notice that it is less than, and there is no equals. So all of these terms are going to be excluded from our answer set. Picking a large positive number, we'll see that's going to come out plus. For example, if I pick a 10 and I plug it in here, it's going to be positive here. It's going to be positive, and here it's going to be positive. That means the x is 10 uh, gives us an answer that's positive, positive, positive. All of these are to the first power. That means that we're going to go ahead and, and, uh, and alternate signs. So that's going to be a minus, and then this is going to be a plus, and that's going to be a minus. And if we want to convince ourselves that that's right, that especially this last one, I might pick a negative 10 and plug that in here. I get a negative. Negative 10 minus a positive quantity is also negative. Uh, negative 10 minus a negative quantity, also negative. Three negatives makes negative when multiplied together. So that confirms our negative right there. Okay, I'm going to back this up just a bit. Anyway, so you can see um, that the negative sign is supposed to be there. Well, let's answer the question then. The question is, where is the product less than 0? And so our answer would come out to be this, uh, x on the following two intervals. Looks like we're looking for this first part over here and then the second part right here. So the first one would be uh, parentheses, negative infinity, comma, 2 minus root 5 with a parentheses because that is not included. And then also 0 to the 2 plus root 5. And those would be the two intervals where it's less than 0. And again, I'm just going to model today what are the two possibilities for all of these answers, the other one being set notation. And that would be x such that. And we write the inequality x less than 2 minus root 5, comma. And the next part is uh, between, so we point our arrows to the left, 0 to 2 plus root 5. There we go.
we go. And those would be the two places where the product is going to be less than zero, or in other words, where the product is negative. Let's move on to the next problem. Here we have what's called the extra factor. And what I mean by that is when you factor this, it's actually a fourth degree polynomial, but it factors like a trinomial. This would be x squared, and this would be x squared if, if this is going to be factorable. And 15 is uh, the multiple of 3 and 5. And so if I put a 5 and 3 in here by subtraction, I would end up with this. Uh, but notice that, OK, so first of all, let's make sure that this factors this way. I see we're going to get negative 5x squared and positive 3x squared, which will make our 2 in the middle. So that does take care of business on that. But there are a couple things that are happening here. Look at this extra factor. This one is always going to be positive, so it will never change sign because a positive, uh, any number squared right here will be positive. Add 3 to it, it'll stay positive. The other one, so we'll just say this stays positive, right? And that's kind of like the surf company. There we go. It'll stay positive there. Cooper kind. Okay, and then the next one is uh, this one here. And we're still less than or equal to 0. So this would be x minus root 5 and x plus root 5. And normally we do, do not uh, factor this because it's not a perfect square, but we're pretending in order to get the two numbers on our line here, negative radical 5 and radical 5. Now in the first case, if we were to try to solve this, x squared plus 3 equals 0, we would get x squared equals negative 3, and that would produce imaginary numbers. And this is only a real number line, so we're not going to deal with those. So in this case, the only answers that we're going to have will have to conform to this number line. So let's start to the right of radical 5. And again, if you pick a number like 10 and you plug it in, you will get a plus here, and you get a plus here, and you get a plus here, and so you get plus. And then you're going to have a nice alternation of signs, again, because these are to the first power. Well, let's answer the question in this one. This one doesn't look too bad now that we've got it set up. Uh, in order to answer this one, we want to know where it's less than or equal to 0. So that would be down in here, right in here. That would be x on the interval. And this time we use a bracket, negative radical 5 to radical 5. Or we can write that in set notation once again uh, with a brace, x such that x is less than or equal to, we're going to put the, I shouldn't say less than or equal to, x is greater than or equal to negative radical 5 and x is less than or equal to radical 5. That would be the proper way to state that. And these guys are the two possible answers, so we've got those two guys, um, but either one is fine. Finally, we have a, a fourth problem here, factoring the beast. And in this case, because we can't um, oftentimes factor these easily, we've developed our, form, our, our method of prime factoring this. This is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, which is the same as 6 times 4. And the second one is 5 times 6, or 2 times 3 times 5. OK, and we're trying to develop the number 71 by subtraction of our of our groupings. So the first grouping is to say, well, I, I'm going to group all of my twos together. And what the heck, I'll just pull a 3 in there. And the second one, I'll have this right here. So uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 48. And this is 15. Now, unfortunately, we're trying to get the 71 by subtraction. And that's not going to cut it there. It looks like we need a bigger number to go with the, we need a bigger number to go over here and a little smaller number here in order to make 71. So I'm going to back this up a bit, and I'm going to retry it, because we certainly want to do this the right way. So let's see. How about if we try, uh, we had the 3 with the 2s, so let's try to put the 5 with the 2s. And we'll put the 3s together. And that's a couple of very ugly um, blobs, but what the heck. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 is 80. And then 3 times 3 is 9. And when you subtract, it does make 71. So we're happy because we've got that to work. All right, so that's the 2 that we want. Therefore, the 24 was factored into an 8 and a 3. So we put those in there. And then in order to see what they're paired with, uh, we say these the 8 was paired with this 2 and this 5. They're in the same blob, so that would be a 10. That's this guy over here. And the 3 was paired with the other 3, so we put that right there. 
this will be plus, and this will be minus, and that's determined by the sine of that 71. So I've made a bit of a mess here, but at least we can see that negative 10 thirds and positive 3 eighths are the two numbers that are going in here. You know, we find those by setting this 3x plus 10 equal to 0, and then solve. Uh, negative 10 thirds is the number that goes on the line. Of course, our sign is greater than 0, so we're looking for n neither of these guys to work. Uh, and our signs, I'm going to put these in there quickly. Oops. That should be a plus, and then a minus, and then a plus. Again, alternating because they're single powered. I've seen that enough times already, so I can do that quickly. And finally, let's write the answer to this. We're looking at places where the inequality is going to satisfy for positive numbers. So x on negative infinity to negative 10 thirds, and that's a parentheses, and then another parentheses, 3 eighths to infinity. Okay, that's the solution in interval notation. And finally, we'll go ahead and finish this out. Uh, x can be then less than negative 10 thirds, or x is greater than 3 eighths. And there you have it. I'll do the irrational ones in our next video.